Hey guys, Aiden here, and today I'm going to be talking to you guys about how to properly select your kayak paddle. So there are four factors that you should consider when purchasing a paddle, um, and we're going to be talking strictly about Euroblade paddles in this video. Yeah, we'll talk about Greenland sticks in a different video. Um, so the first of these four factors is going to be the overall length of your paddle. So one easy way to quickly tell if your paddle is the right length is to hold it next to you. Um, on the ground vertically. Reach up as high as you can and see if you can grab the blade of that paddle, right? If you're like easily grabbing the end, you know, you don't have to extend your arm all the way, then it's probably too short. If you can't, or you're on your tippy toes trying to do that, it's probably too long. So the next factor we're going to be talking about uh, is the size and the shape of the blade of your paddle. And as you can see, they come in a wide variety of sizes here. Um, so take this paddle, for example, um, you can see how the blade is wider um, and kind of short. And so this is going to be ideal for uh, a more aggressive paddler, uh, more aggressive strokes, uh, a higher angle stroke. So what that is going to look like is something where you're kind of like really vertical um, and you're um, bringing that paddle angle way up like this. So that's more useful for like, you know, paddling in waves. Um, and shorter, shorter distance kinds of things, All right? Now compare this Cadence X, which is a Lendl paddle, um, to this Werner Skagit here. Um, look at the blade on this guy, um, and you can compare it here to the Cadence X. Um, you can see how much longer and also how much narrower it is. Um, and so the Skagit is a pretty um, classic ring blade. So what that's going to mean is um, you're going to use a much lower angle stroke. So instead of being way up like here, I'm going to be lower angled here, um, which is uh, more useful uh, when I'm paddling long days um, with a, you know, with a lower angle stroke there. The third factor is blade composition. Um, there are three main materials that kayak paddles are made out of when you're referring to the blade. Um, and so you'll find them in plastic blades. Uh, you'll find them in fiberglass blades like this green one here. Um, and then you'll find them in carbon uh, composite here as well. All right. And there's kind of going to be a trade off here with durability um, and weight, right? The lighter the paddle, the lighter weight, the material, um, the more you're going to have to take care of that paddle. Also, um, the more money you're going to pay, uh, the lighter that paddle is going to be, right? So something like this with a carbon blade is going to be a lot more than something like this with a plastic blade. And the final factor uh, we'll talk about um, is the shaft design. Um, traditionally, uh, kayak paddles have a straight shaft, um, but more and more you're seeing uh, what's called crankshaft paddles, um, which have these uh, crooks in it where you're meant to grip the paddle. A lot of people will find that the crankshaft, um, after they've gotten used to it, they'd never go back. It tends to be easier on the wrist. So if you're paddling a lot um, and you're worried about tenosynovitis and that kind of thing, um, a crankshaft tends to be the better option. And remember, it's what's on the inside that counts. The most powerful paddlers in the world use paddles with uh, a core consisting of festral hair, dragon heartstring, or phoenix feather. So keep in mind, you don't choose the paddle, the paddle chooses you. Ah, forgot my paddle. Akio Lendl.